Auburn, Alabama, home of Auburn University, and we're going to visit with bioassistant student Jonathan Hall. Jonathan's going to tell us about the work that he's doing on poultry litter spreaders and how he's helping the American farmer become a better steward of the land and save money at the same time. Let's go see what he's doing. Well, Grace, right now what we're doing is we're evaluating something called variable rate, variable rate technology. That is something where we're applying the technology that's on the cutting edge out in the industry to farm equipment. And so I'm focusing more on poultry litter application. Here in the south, especially Alabama, we're predominantly uh, growing um, chickens, especially in the northern part of the state. And as a byproduct of chickens, we have a lot of chicken litter. And it's, it's rich in nutrients, so it's a cheap fertilizer for farmers to use on their uh, fields and crops. So what we're looking at, we know that poultry litter is very inconsistent when it comes to moisture content, when it comes to uh, cohesiveness. So when you're out in the field spreading it, you're going to have large clumps in some parts of the field and small clumps in others. Well, the problem with that is you're not going to get a uniform uh, application on your field. And um, poultry litter is high in phosphorus. And phosphorus is good in certain amounts, but when it gets over applied, it can run off into the groundwater and streams and as a result um, have an impact on the environment in a negative way. So we're just trying to be better stewards of the land and by implementing new technologies um, to the equipment that we already have. Tell me a little bit about this uh, technology that you're, that you're working on to prevent these problems from happening. Well, it's a multi-part, um, I guess, explanation. Uh, we're utilizing uh, GPS, which most people are familiar with, you know, having a GPS uh, in their car to guide them from one place to the other. We're utilizing uh, GPS that's very accurate. We can get down to the sub-inch level. So we're very accurate, and um, using that, we can come back repeatedly over the same place and uh, apply our litter or apply our granular fertilizers or liquid fertilizers in the spot where we know we want to spread it or apply it. And that's called site-specific management. Um, and then incorporating the GPS, we are uh, bringing in the variable rate technology that I just spoke about. And that helps us do our site-specific plans. And the way that works, let's just say in the off season, a farmer might go out and do some soil samples. And he knows what is needed in certain areas of the field and what is not needed. So he can form a prescription map, upload it onto the on uh, or the in cab computer in the tractor, and using GPS, uh, he can apply the litter where it's needed. And so you're not over applying and having runoff into the streams and waterways. And then the third part of that is something called guidance control. That is uh, where we're utilizing the GPS to, in a sense, drive the tractor. And you'll probably see a little bit more of that when we go out in a few minutes. Um, essentially, what it does, you have your reference lines from your prescription maps, from point A to point B. Well, the computer knows I need to stay on that path. Well, utilizing the high accuracy uh, GPS signal, we can stay within an inch of that line and we know we're going to apply what we need to apply and where we need to apply it and how much. Okay, Jonathan, I see here we have a steering wheel and we have an accelerator and a brake pedal, so I'm supposing that this is a simulator for a tractor cab. That's correct, Grace. Uh, what we have here, the white dome you see on top, is the GPS receiver. It's what actually brings in the GPS signal that guides our tractor throughout the field. Uh, below it we have a panel of switches which is our um, nozzles. We have six nozzles on this uh, simulation mock-up and we have a computer screen which is the exact computer screen that the farmer or producer would have in the cab of his tractor so he can monitor where he's at and where he's going in the field. And then we have of course our steering wheel and brake and accelerator pedal that's just a uh, just for our demonstration purposes only. And what you're seeing here, this is not an actual sprayer that you would go out and buy. This is an, uh, something we constructed in here in our department for uh, demonstration purposes. And we have two groups coming in, high schools, other uh, junior colleges, just to show them on a small scale what this can do. Okay. All right, so now I, I'm gonna give this a try if it's okay. Go for it. <laughs> All right, now if, 
I'm accelerating forward, I can see that all of the nozzles are spraying right now, correct? Correct. All right, I'm gonna ease over into an area that has already been sprayed. I'm anxious to see what happens. You can start to hear those nozzles clicking on and off, and now none of the nozzles are none on. None of them are on. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take it for a whiz back out. <laughs> and you can see I'm cutting back on. Man, that's remarkable. Well, I can definitely see how this would be a, a great benefit to a farmer, not only in um, being a better steward of the land, but also in saving, cutting down on the fertilizer costs. Exactly. Costs. Exactly. Okay, Jonathan, I know that we saw earlier a li liquid applicator, but now we get to see the real thing up close and personal. So tell us what we have here. Well, Grace, right here we have a poultry litter spreader. This is um, what we were talking about earlier about the granular, you could, um, the granular material, mm -hmm. such as poultry litter, is applied using something such as this. This is a spinner spreader. Um, what we have here, we have a gate that we can it helps adjust the flow or the amount of litter that's coming out to the disc to be spread. This can be adjusted to whatever application rate that you want to uh, use. Uh, we have here a conveyor chain that brings the litter out to the, the disc okay. and then it falls on this divider and splits the flow onto two separate spinning discs okay. and these discs will spin broadcasting the litter out in um, a pattern away from the back end of the spreader okay and um, we talked about it earlier the variable rate technology we looked at it on the liquid sprayer well, for here we have a sensor mounted beneath this disc so we can control our spinner speed of our spreader Okay. Now, you might say, well, why would you want to do that? Um, well, traditional spreaders have manual settings. You have to get out of the tractor, adjust the lever, open valves. Well, this has electronic control valves where the computer that we saw in the simulation that's in the tractor will automatically open and close those valves to adjust the spinner speed, the spinner speed and the conveyor speed to what we need it to. Lazy farmer. Lazy farmer. <laughs> now, okay, I'm assuming that when all this is going on, we're standing exactly where you don't want to be. <laughs> yes, we are actually standing in the worst case possible if well, this I'm, thing were actually running. I'm glad so. it's not running and that it's not loaded. Okay, let's go take a look at some other parts. Okay, there. sounds good. All right, Jonathan, I know there have to, has to be some other interesting stuff going on here. <laughs> right. Well, obviously, this is where the spreader hooks up to the tractor. Mm -hmm. and. We talked about the electronic control valves that allows the farmer to stay in the cab and monitor actually what he's doing instead of focusing on getting in and out of the tractor to adjust his settings. Right. Well, these things right here are the electronic control valves. If you see, there's wires uh, connected to these valves that uh, allow the computer to automatically open and close those valves depending on what you know what application rate you're. Um, applying at. So it controls the conveyor, it controls the spinner speed on both discs. So. so this is an integral part of this whole it process. It is, very, it, very integral. Alright, now I noticed another unusual piece down here, this paddle you got here. Tell me about that. Yes, well that's what we're about to show you. Um, to demonstrate the accuracy of this tractor, or not just the tractor, the equipment that we're applying to this tractor, the GPS, um, uh, the sub-inch accuracy, we're going to show you some um, golf balls. And what's going to happen is as we're going across our lines that we put into our onboard computer on that map, uh, this paddle will knock those golf balls off to demonstrate how accurate it can be out in the field. It's that precise. It's huh? that precise. All right. Well, I see that we have it here, obviously, on a John Deere, but this doesn't, it's not exclusive to John Deere, right? Right. It can be applied to any tractor out there, whether it be a Kubota, New Holland, uh, Case, you know, you name it. All right. So. Well, let's see it then. Okay. Let's show you. 